You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Hey everybody, I wanted to welcome you to this episode of the Brutal Truth About Sales and Selling podcast. Hey, what I want to talk about today is what I call the B-player trap. And this is something that I've kind of come to the resolution on after five years of sales training, sales consulting, uh, trying to help people out podcasting, working with bloggers like, like what Gong's doing about analyzing sales calls and interviewing sales leaders. And, you know, what they all say is what we really want is coachability. Now, what sometimes that means I want them to do what I tell them to <laughs> or I want them to do what works. And what happens is people get stuck in the B player trap. What's the B player trap? The B player trap is where they're getting, you know, 80% of their quota done. They're, they're good salespeople. They, they know the process. They've got good listening, good questioning skills, good closing skills. But the problem is they're just not crushing it. They're not living up to their potential. And what ends up happening is they look outside of themselves. And I, I try and explain this all the time. It's like, you're right. They're, you know, it might be the economy, your territory, the product, your manager, your support people. You're, you're right. Okay, but do you have control over that? You might have some control. You might have some influence over that. But what you have total control over is yourself. And it comes back to this saying that I learned a lot in time ago. I don't remember who originally said it, but it's like when the student is ready the teacher will appear. Because what ends up happening is it's not that you don't know the thing. It's that you're, you're just not ready to apply it. Because what, what's the most common thing I get when I, I'm talking to people? And that they're like, oh, we're trying to get into this account. We're trying to close it. We're trying to get the next meeting. I, there's nearly 99% of the, oh, we did that. Uh, I know that. That's a good refresher. And it's like, ah. Uh, Yes, you did something, you got the, the, the result, but did you do it in the right, best way, in, in a way that was effective? Clearly, you didn't. Does it mean you're a bad person? No. And, you, and people still think of sales as this binary, bullion thing. Either it, it worked or it didn't work. No, it's a continuum. <laughs> and, you know, and even like having A, B, and C players might be too... Um, you know, too big of a definition. It's just a continuum. And what people say, I did that. I know that. Oh, that's a refresher. And it's like, well, if you're not doing it or you're not effective at it, you're not ready to learn how to be better at it. And that's what we all have to be. And I really had this revelation. I was listening to the book by Ray Dalio. Ray Dalio is a hedge fund manager, a really bright guy, you know, Harvard Business School. He's worth $17 billion. And his whole culture is this very analytical, uh, debating uh, meritocracy about ideas, meaning that he wants people to debate and put the egos aside. And this is really weird for most of us because sales is naturally a very ego-based thing because once you because it's almost there's some science to it there's a lot of science to it but the, once you get the art you become unconsciously competent at it and you think your way is the only way because it works for you and it it might be a great way and it, it might be working fantastic for you but when it doesn't work, you got to look at yourself. you got to get you, the student, ready, and then the teacher will appear. Because this is what everyone says. It's like, give me the silver bullet. And it's like, well, you know, the silver bullet is you, and you have to be ready and open-minded to these ideas. And until you are, you're going to be stuck in the B-player trap. And this is 80% of the, the salespeople. This is the classic case. You, go, you get called in. Um, you know, and you go on site and, you know, I interviewed the manager and he's basically, oh, the reps aren't, uh, they're not, you know, engaging with the clients, they're not getting enough meetings, uh, deals are getting left on the table, there's no decision. Okay, then you talk to the reps and the reps say, oh, I don't get any help, the product's too expensive, uh, the terms and conditions aren't uh, 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 good enough, um, you know, people don't want to move, it's difficult, and, and, and like they're right. Okay, so how do we solve this? Unless 
you know, what they do is everyone pushes it onto someone else instead of saying, well, how do I get the job done? <coughs> and once in a while, you'll find the one rep who just says, eh, I work around it. You know, I've, this is what I do. I figured this out. And then everybody else, well, that's because he has or she has his magical skill. Well, we all need our magical skill. And that's what we got to do. We've got to get ourselves ready. If we're not open minded, we're not going to get the result that we want. And, and in Ray Dalio's book, you know, it's a little dry. <laughs> you know, it's called Principles. Check it out. He, he runs a hedge fund called Bridgewater, largest hedge fund in the world, $150 billion in assets. And they just, you know, he's very analytical, comes up with a system. Does that sound familiar? A system that he then puts into a computer, do all these analytics, and then they debate over the decisions of, you know, these trades that they do and their strategy. And he also uses kind of my thing about playing online chess because it really humbles you. Because you think, oh, I can beat this little iPhone in chess, but and you're losing at level two, you know? And it takes you, oh, it took me a year to get to level six. And you're like, oh. And, and now if you take a week off, you're back at level three. And this is what we got to understand is that we're, we're human beings. And we've got to have our process. And, and this is why? Because it's got to be out of our head. And I, I got to tell you, I, I talk to salespeople all day. I bet less than 2% have it written in, in a diagram, in a pipeline, uh, other than, oh, um, you know, get a meeting, get a presentation, get a proposal, negotiate, close. That, that's what I see. And it's like, oh, and, and you, you know where everything is stuck? Uh, negotiation. <laughs> And everyone could do that, Raz. Everyone get a, most people get a meeting. Everyone give a demo. Certainly everyone can send a proposal. And then all of a sudden it just dies there because they, they got that mystery middle. And I, you try and teach that and they're like, oh, yeah, it'll, yeah, they love us. You know, that there's this kind of um, uh, bestowed greatness that they have that they're just going to happen. And what ends up happening is it doesn't happen. And that's what we're facing right now. We're at the end of the year and these deals are out there and some of them are going to happen. Some of them aren't. And are we open-minded? Are we getting ourselves ready to understand? And this is what, you know, these sales managers, when they say coachability, what they want is people not stuck in the B player trap. They want people who, who may be B players, but they want to be A players. They're willing to take feedback. They understand that it's not about their ego, that it's about becoming better. It's about someone watching you do your golf swing a hundred times. Boo. Okay, put more weight on your black leg. Okay, get your thumbs aligned. Loosen up. You're a little stiff. A lot of people can't take that feedback. And if you can't, you either got to get yourself ready or you're going to have to suffer the life in the B player trap, which is not the place to be. Because, you know, people, every time I see sales, they, they put the normal distribution curve and it's not that, you know, where the very end is like the 5%. It's more like a hockey stick because at that far right hand side, it's that 5 to 1% that are generating 80% of the revenue. And, you know, everybody calls me and he goes, I want everybody like that. And I go, okay. Um, you know, and, and you got to tell people, it's like, you've got a lot of people in the B player trap and, you know, <clears throat> I interview them and, you know, they're scared and they think I'm judging them and they're not asking for input. They're not asking to, how can they become better? And they just stick in that trap. And then, and they say, oh, and they're comfortable. And, and there's a lot of people in the C player trap too. And they, those people, you just they just get rid of. So if you're in the C player trap, you, your, your life expectancy is not long. And I'm just <laughs> warning you there. So let's go through some of these things. Okay. So if you're not coachable, you got to get coachable. Okay. So how do you do it? Now, what you got to do is find somebody and that model them. They don't have to be in the whole sales process, but in an individual skill. Now, the most common thing that I find is that people are not good listeners. They, they talk over people. They um, lose interest when they're not talking. Uh, they don't actively listen. They're waiting to say what they want to say. They talk. They interrupt. Uh, they talk too fast. They don't match uh, the conversation words per minute of the other person. Um, they think it's everybody else's fault. Okay, so you got to get good at that. 
And, and number two is they don't prepare questions. Questions are your magical mind control trick of all time. If you, and they don't ask any questions. They, they'll just say, well, how do you do it? Okay, I did that. Uh, uh. And then what I see is like, okay, show me. And that's what I go, uh, show me your emails. And they're like these long, verbose, ball about me, me, me. Can I get 15 minutes? Oh, God. And I don't know. That's what they taught me. I, I read it online. I go, yeah, that's what worked in the 90s. It doesn't work anymore. And and when they're on the phone, you, I look at the, the gong scripts, you know, the, the, and they're like, they're not asking good questions. They're not asking follow-up questions. They're not asking implication questions. And number three is they're not getting a next step. They're giving everything that they've got, and then they're sending a proposal and there's no technical win. There's no business win. It's not justified financially. They don't understand the process internally. The mystery middle is still a mystery. They're sticking with that one person within the account, a single threaded sales opportunity. Number four, they have no idea what the process is because unfortunately the managers don't know either <laughs> You know, because everybody thinks it's like get the meeting, get the demo, send a proposal, negotiate close. Okay. Yeah. But there's uh, from the time you get the, the demo, the demo doesn't mean you got the technical sale. That means you just, they know what the product looks like. Are they using it? Have they integrated it? D do they understand the benefit of it? Are they, are they, had that transfer of ownership taken place? That feeling that I need and I must have this. And, it, and if you, if you map out your presentation or process, even in like in pipe drive, where you just have a different column, even went from a prospect and maybe having a pipeline for each stage. And, you know, some people show me theirs. I go, do you have too many? I go, whatever works for you works for you. But when things get stuck in a certain stage for more than a month, you know, there's something wrong. You know that there's more stages in there that you're not taking care of, that you have to become creative about how to stay engaged and keep it moving. And typically what happens is they're talking to one person and that person lost interest or got stonewalled internally at the account and it's going nowhere. Okay. So number five is you don't have a learning cycle. The learning cycle is, okay, do you have a, a pre-call plan? Now, this is for a, a call that is important. You know, a good qualification call, a good discovery call, a good demo call, a good business justification call. If you don't have, you know, even a five-step, three-step <laughs> preparation, just to have it a file, a mind map, a PowerPoint, whatever works for you, a Prezi, <laughs> about what those calls look like so that you can prepare for them, you're crazy. Okay, it's gonna take you five years to get that down, and I still see people years after this because it's too complicated you got to get it out of your head so that you can remember it so you can prepare for it so you can review it because after the call because when you're on the call you want to be on game you're on the field this is what you practice for what you worked for you've got to make that the best and you got to be super confident but after the call you can kind of tear yourself apart a little bit like okay what did i do give yourself a grade how well did i listen how well did i execute on my questions how well did I set up a next step? Did I give too much or did I use everything I have to get to the next step? So that learning curve. So those five things. If you do that and focus on getting yourself ready, okay? Once you're ready, the answer will appear. What most people say, I'm not ready. I'm not seeing any problem, but just tell me uh, what you do. That's what I hear. Tell me what you do. You're not ready. Okay, I can tell you what I do. And you're going to say, I did that, I've done that, I tried that, didn't work or doesn't work. And it's like, okay, so what do you do? You, you tweak it a little. You show somebody else it and you say, what would you do? Okay, you try it a little different. And, and you I go, how do I shorten it up? Is it, is it too much? Is it, did I do it on the wrong day, at the wrong time, the wrong person? And if you don't review that and analyze it, you're not going to get it. And, you know, and, and it's this never, you never really get the answer. What you do is you become better at it every day. Just that 1% get a little bit better at it. So what do you do with this? Okay. First of all, are you using technology the best way possible? Are you using things like nudge to get you leads in the morning, to give you intelligence, to, to talk about what they care about, to connect with people in your ecosystem, to get into accounts? Are you sticking with one person? Okay, you should immediately 
you know, if it's a low level person, find out who their manager is. Don't give quotes out uh, without talking to the people who really have economic impact, that you understand how are they going to get this approved, who needs to approve it, and how do you keep it going? Okay, are, are you really reviewing each call using things like Gong or just, you know, getting feedback from other people? If other people are on the call, you know, sit down with them and say, how, how could we have done better? Well, how would you rate that call? Did, did we, when, before the call, set, how do you think the call is going to go? This used to be my way of really developing my judging skills. Before the call, I would write down, what do you think you're going to care about? How far can I move it down the field in this call? And you know what? You're always too optimistic and, and you're going to get at best 80% of it. And then I go, what can I hold back to get the next meeting? How do I give an appropriate amount of you know, gives to get the things that I want, to move the thing along and get a committed next touch point, whether it's in person, on the phone, whatever. Okay, now once you do that, and you just go out and get Ray Dalio's book. And when you hear, you know, a multi-billionaire constantly analyzing his approach, you're like, holy smokes, that's how I have to be to get out of this B player trap because the real money and sales is at the A player and the maverick level. You know, the B players, you know, what you see today is companies are mucking with the quotas to cut down on commission expense. So what's going to end up happening is that top one to 5% is going to get 80% of the commission. Now you can try and change that or you can become really good. And I bet you want to become really good. Because I've been asking this question on the B2B Revenue Leadership Podcast. I ask people, uh, if you could have one superpower, the superpower is either 30% more intelligence, IQ, EQ, however you, whatever intelligence you'd like, 30% more, or would you rather not have any physical need for sleep, where you, we just no longer had any need for sleep. You were the same energy level all day long. You never got you know, tired and need, never needed to take a nap. So you'd have you know, eight hours more a day or 30% more intelligence. Now, think about that and think about what answer would work for you. Now, in sales, we're kind of taught about the hard work. The problem with hard work is how many more hours a week can you really work? You know, five, 10 without getting sick. I mean, without it having, you know, a negative net impact, you know, because it, certainly, you know, at the end of the year, you're going to have those super crazy weeks and you're going to, you're going to put in 60, 70 hours, but can, how long can you sustain that? You know, and certainly, you know, if you're in your early twenties, you can probably, you know, put five or 10 more hours, but that's only, you know, what, uh, 10, 15, 20%. Now, how do you really get it? It really has to be through brain power because, <laughs> and how do you get brain power is technology and other people's knowledge. Those are the two things. And then your skill set. How do you do that? You got to do practice. You got to be open-minded to it. If you're not open-minded to it, you, no matter what someone shows you, you're not going to take it and really integrate it. You're not going to evolve and make yourself better. It's going to take years. It's going to take 10 years. Now, how do you get that down to two or three years? One, you've got to face the things that you're not as good at as you want and assume you're not perfect at anything. Okay, but focus on the key things, not everything, but the key things, listening, questioning, next steps. Have a learning cycle. You will become infinitely great, infinitely faster. If you stick in the B player trap, you're looking at 10 years before you're going to get to the B plus, and you may never get to the A player. You can try the hustle and grind approach, but it doesn't scale. Any more than 10 more hours a week, and I bet you're going to get sick. You're going to get burnt out. You're going to ruin your personal life. You're going to ruin your family life. You're going to ruin your health. It doesn't scale. What does scale is using technologies, you know, use pipe drive, use nudge, Use co-video, use smarter ways of finding clients, finding out what they care about and communicating with them and reviewing your performance. That is how you're going to get better. And then open your mind, become the student that is ready, and then the teacher will appear. Whether it's me or somebody else, until you're ready, it's not going to happen. Think about it if you want to lose weight. If you don't think you're 
unhealthy, you're not going to lose weight. When do people lose weight? Or when do they stop doing something unhealthy? When it's too late, when, it, when all of a sudden it, it impacts their health to the point they have to do it. When the doctor says, if you don't do this, you're going to die. That's when they do it. Or there's some people, or some intervention. So you got to get yourself to the intervention stage. Not that you are. Do it. Do it now. And just find out these skills. Come up with these simple things. Just come up with a learning cycle and you'll be fantastic. I hope this has been helpful. I've got some great stuff coming up. Some great interviews. 2018 is going to be a monster year for all of us. Stick with the podcast. I really appreciate the people who are sharing it on LinkedIn. I've got some great funny videos I'm putting up on YouTube. Maverick Method on YouTube. Every morning i got a video coming up there. So subscribe to the, the channel there. And send me your questions. I love hearing from you. And looking forward to a great 2018. And we're going to have a lot of fun. Thanks for listening. I want to know the truth. Because deep down in places that you don't talk about at team and management meetings, you want me on that call. You need me on that call. We use words like fleet view, volume control, total cost of ownership. We use these words as a backbone of a life spent negotiating something. You use them as a punchline. I have neither the time nor inclination to explain myself to people who rise and sleep under the very blanket of revenue that I provide and then question the manner in which I provide it. I would rather you just said thank you and went on your way. Otherwise, may I suggest you pick up a phone and make some sales calls. Either way, I don't give a damn what you think you're entitled to. Did you expense the lap dances? I did the job I was hired. Did you expense the lap dances? You're goddamn right I did!